Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today I'll be sharing a full five day hypertrophy program based off the FAT setup or power hypertrophy adaptive training. This is a training system introduced by Lane Norton that builds both strength and hypertrophy. This is a low volume program designed for beginners or those who respond well to low volumes. The FAT setup brings together power days or days oriented towards more strength type work with lower rep ranges and higher weights and more traditional hypertrophy type days. The idea is that you can really work on building strength earlier in the week and then accumulate more volume later in the week for hypertrophy. I think this setup can actually work really well for beginners. I'll be using this five day split in this program. It is upper body day, lower body day, back and shoulders, lower body day, and chest and arms. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then we'll talk about the weekly setup or how I prefer to lay out the workouts across the week. And finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this beginner fat program. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's beginner fat program. It's set with low volumes designed for a beginner athlete. We have upper body power day, lower body power day, back and shoulders hypertrophy day, lower body hypertrophy day, and chest and arms hypertrophy. Here are the exercises and there are the sets and reps. Down here we have the total number of sets for each workout to give you an idea of workout length. And here we have the total number of sets for each muscle group per week. And you can see this is a low volume program. As I mentioned, we have our two power days earlier in the week and then our more hypertrophy oriented days later in the week where we accumulate more volume with lighter weights. We start off on upper body power day with bench press for the chest, three sets of three to six reps. After that, we have weighted pull-ups, which I've actually programmed in a somewhat strength-oriented fashion where you have a top set back off method. One top set of five to eight reps followed by two back off sets with six to 10 reps and slightly lighter weight. Top set back off method is a nice way to introduce a little bit of strength work with the lower rep ranges, but still accumulating more volume. Not many people do this, but I actually like programming weighted chin ups and pull ups in a strength oriented fashion. I think they are a very overloadable exercise and that's really powerful in order to drive hypertrophy. If you're a beginner and you're not able to do pull-ups, just start by doing assisted pull-ups with an assisted pull-up machine or using bands for assistance. But you should try to really progress these with the idea of doing them weighted eventually. Then we have single arm dumbbell rows for the back three sets of six to 10. And again, since this is a power day, I really want you to be focusing on going heavy on these. At a higher level, it would be difficult to challenge yourself on single arm dumbbell rows just because the gym's dumbbells don't go heavy enough but they're great at least at the beginner level. Then we have easy bar skull crushers for the triceps, three sets of six to 10, followed by barbell upright rows for the side delts, three sets of six to 10. Finally, we have standing calf raises for the calves, three sets of eight to 12. And you'll see that I've actually swapped calf work with bicep work on lower and upper body days at the beginning of the week. This is so I can train my biceps when they're fresh on lower body day and not when they're fatigued after back work. And calves basically just get swapped as a placeholder so your lower body days don't get too long. Moving on to lower body power day, we start off with squats for the quads, three sets of three to six reps, followed by deadlifts, two sets of three to six reps. And you'll see that we're leading quite a bit on these low rep ranges earlier in the week. As I mentioned, beginners are able to develop both strength and hypertrophy simultaneously. And doing heavy sets in low rep ranges will still build you plenty of muscle. Next, we have leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of six to 10, followed by leg extensions for the quads, three sets of six to 10. And I've deliberately placed my isolation leg work on this power day so that it doesn't get too fatiguing since it already has squats and deadlifts. Notice that I typically program these in a slightly higher rep range, but here we're using them in a bit of a heavier fashion on these power days. For someone who's more advanced, I might recommend having a bit more variety in their rep ranges. But if you're a beginner, and especially if you're training with low volumes, I'd recommend really focusing on that more six to 12 rep range and really trying to progress in that first. Next, we have inclined bicep curls for the biceps, four sets of six to 10. Moving on to back and shoulders hypertrophy day, we start off with dumbbell overhead press, three sets of six to 10. And these train the front delts and triceps. Then we have T-bar rows for the back, three sets of six to 10. Then we have dumbbell pullovers, which train the back, but also hit a little bit of the chest. I'm mainly just counting them for back here, three sets of 10 to 15. After that, cable upright rows for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. And finally, cable lateral raises also for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. I deliberately put pullovers here to give you a little bit of indirect pec volume on this day in between your other chest training. Going on, we have lower body hypertrophy day and we start off with hack squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12, followed by barbell hip thrusts for the glutes and hamstrings, two sets of six to 10. Then we have dumbbell RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. These are a great exercise for their ability to put a stretch on the hamstrings and they can be overloaded up to a point. That is, eventually you'll get too strong for the dumbbells in your gym and you'll have to revert to a barbell and plates. 
Then we have leg presses for the quads, three sets of 10 to 15. And while you're on the leg press machine, you can do some calf raises for the calves, three sets of 10 to 15. Next, we have chest and arms hypertrophy day. We started with weighted dips, which I count for chest and triceps, three sets of six to 10. And notice that I'm really sticking to more traditional hypertrophy rep ranges on these hypertrophy days. Even though you might sometimes see me putting dumbbell overhead presses or weighted dips in a lower rep range, I really kept them a bit more moderate here. The idea is that you've already gotten in your heavy work earlier in the week, so at this point later in the week, you really just want to accumulate some more volume. And we have incline dumbbell bench press for the chest, three sets of 8 to 12. Following that, machine flies, also for the chest, two sets of 10 to 15. You'll see that I've given weighted dips a bit of the priority over our dumbbell bench press variation here. Again, if you can't do weighted dips yet, you can use an assisted machine or a band, but I am using these as a heavy main movement. Then we have hammer curls for the biceps, two sets of 8 to 12. Following that, rope press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. Then we have machine preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And finally, cable lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 12 to 20. You'll notice that our lower body days have the least number of sets, and this is because these days are more fatiguing with big leg movements than your upper body oriented days. Notice that our biceps actually get a four times per week frequency here since they get trained indirectly through back training on this upper body power day and on this back day, but also get trained directly on this lower body power day and on your chest and arm day. Side delts get trained three times per week here by design. Yes, I did shift a bit of side delt work onto chest and arms day. As you know, I always like to make modifications to splits to make them better. All right, now that you've seen the program, let's go over my preferred layout. We have upper body power day, lower body power day, rest day, back controllers hypertrophy, lower body day two, hypertrophy, chest and arms, and rest. A couple things I want to point out with this split. First of all, your power days early in the week are going to be your tougher days, so it makes sense that you've got two of them here as opposed to the three hypertrophy oriented days put together in a segment later in the week. Next, when upper lower comes together, we have the upper body day come first because a tough lower body day can affect your upper body training coming afterwards. This also comes into play a little bit here where I prefer having the back training come before lower body training. I actually like how this program has arm training coming with chest, which takes biceps off of back day. This solves one of the big disadvantages of the push-pull leg setup, where biceps typically comes after back training, and when your biceps are fatigued after back work, you may not perform as well. So I kind of like this chest and arms pairing, although this workout tends to be your easier workout of the week. This program does do a decent job of spreading out your lower body training and your back training. Your arm training also does get split up when you consider how your biceps and triceps get trained indirectly on back and shoulder day. Notice that chest training does get bunched up later in the week though. One thing to point out here is that this back and shoulder day gets a little bit of priority since it comes after rest day. This can be nice if you're trying to bring up your back and shoulders. What split do you guys want to see me cover next? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this beginner fat program. Starting off with the pros, this program is nice for beginners because you can build size and strength simultaneously. There's a lot of debate out there on the optimal rep ranges for hypertrophy, and you'll see that a lot of traditional bodybuilders stick to the 8 to 12 rep range, for example. But recent studies actually show that we can build muscle in a variety of rep ranges from 1 to 30-ish reps, provided that you're going close enough to failure. So having some strength work in the 3 to 6 rep range in this program on your power days still will build you muscle. The main con of this is that you develop quite a bit of fatigue from trying to lift heavy weights. However, for beginners, this isn't a problem because you're not able to lift that heavy. This issue is also minimized in this program since it's a low volume setup. If you were training with high volumes or if you were more advanced and you could lift a lot of weight, fatigue would probably become an issue if you're always trying to lift heavy. So do keep in mind that for a more advanced athlete, optimal strength and hypertrophy training will ultimately diverge. Next, this program has efficient use of DUP or daily undulating periodization. This is the practice of basically separating your rep ranges in the week so you have days dedicated to lower rep, higher weight work and days dedicated to lighter, higher rep work. Some people like this setup because they're able to really focus on strength and lifting heavy on those power days. Next, as I mentioned earlier, your back and shoulder day gets a bit of priority since it's placed after a rest day. Often back and shoulders aren't given as much priority in a program. You'll often hear bodybuilders placing their chest day first in the week. Next, this program allows you to train your biceps when they're fresh. I like the combination of chest and arms where you're able to train your biceps, not after back. And you saw me make one of my signature modifications to the upper lower segment of the program where I shifted biceps off of upper body day onto lower body day. You'll find that you perform better on your bicep work with these modifications. Finally, this program gives you a high frequency for your shoulder and arm training, particularly when you count the indirect work that the biceps and triceps get from back and pressing work. 
Okay, now let's talk about the cons of this FAT program or power hypertrophy adaptive training. First of all, with this program, you have relatively tough power days. Lifting heavy tends to be more fatiguing, especially when we place our big compound movements like squat and deadlift on lower body day one. Note that this isn't as much of an issue again for beginners since they just aren't lifting as much weight. So at a more advanced level, I actually like spread out your heavy work throughout the week a bit more. This way you get to even out the stress a bit, but for beginners, this is gonna be fine. Next, with this split as laid out, you'll see chest work gets bunched up later in the week. I started this because I have tried to address this program a little bit. As you saw, I put dumbbell pullovers onto our back and shoulder day, which does hit your pecs to a small degree. And you could argue that overhead presses hit your upper pecs a little bit. Now, I will be sharing this full program as laid out in an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't joined the group already, find the link in the description below, join the group, and you can download the program for free. If you're looking for another five day program, check out this playlist with my push pull legs upper lower programs. Push pull legs upper lower is a combination split bringing together the popular upper lower and push pull leg splits into one program setup. It's an alternative to what I showed here and it's a split that could actually work with a fat type programming setup. For more free hypertrophy programs, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.